Hey guys, I'm Neil, and welcome to my channel, Neon Black Reviews. If you're new here, I'm just a guy that likes to talk about horror movies. I upload several new horror movie reviews every week, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. I'd love to have you aboard, and all you have to do is click that subscribe button. And if you click the bell next to it, you'll never miss a review, because YouTube will let you know every time I upload a new video. Also, if you would, go ahead and click that like as well. That thumbs up really helps this video out with YouTube's algorithm. And of course, I appreciate all of your support. So tonight, I'm going to be wrapping up the series I've been doing on the Annabelle films. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the third film, Annabelle Comes Home. Uh, if you haven't seen that one or this one, uh, it came out back in 2019. And uh, it starts out uh, showing Ed and Lorraine Warren uh, taking ownership of the Annabelle doll and bringing it home, uh, putting it into the room with all the other cursed objects, and uh, giving her her own special glass case as another added layer of protection, because, yeah, they need it with this one. Uh, then, shortly after it uh, fast-forwards to a year later, um, their daughter Judy is coming up uh, on her birthday, uh, and there's also been a uh, a newspaper article published about Ed and Lorraine that uh, details what it is that they actually do for a living. And apparently this was not general knowledge because all of the parents that have been reading this article are now uh, having second thoughts about allowing their kids to go to the birthday party for Judy. So they're backing out one by one. And of course this is uh, having an effect on her. Uh, she's being bullied at school because of it. The other kids are picking on her. Yeah, it's just not a good thing, um, but uh, anyway, um, she's dealing with all of that, and uh, Ed and Lorraine have to go out of town for a night uh, on the weekend, and they're leaving her at home uh, with the babysitter. So that's the general idea behind this one. Uh, the babysitter's uh, best friend comes over because she's curious about what might actually be in that room. And long story short, she ends up getting in there and letting Annabelle out of the glass case. And uh, yeah, all hell breaks loose in this house uh, during the night. So uh, that's, uh, like I said, uh, the general idea behind this one. Um, so uh, yeah, I saw this one um, opening weekend back in 2019. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, I think one of the... Yeah, one of the last movies that I saw uh, before everything shut down for COVID. Uh, but I enjoyed the movie so much that I actually went back and saw it twice. Now, I didn't actually, you know, pay for, uh, you know, tickets to go see it. Uh, as you guys probably know from other reviews, uh, I do uh, pay the $20 a month for the AMC A-list. So I get to see, uh, what is it, three movies a week, uh, which is a lot harder to do. I don't think I more than once or twice ever actually watched three movies in the same week. But anyway, you get to watch three movies a week, uh, and you don't have to pay for the tickets, and it's just $20 a month. So I use two of my reservations uh, to go see this film, because uh, I really do enjoy it. Uh, and there's a lot of things that I enjoy about this film. Uh, I guess probably first and foremost is that I think it's a genuinely, genuinely creepy and atmospheric horror film. Um, you know, it takes place inside the house of Ed and Lorraine Warren. Uh, you've got all of these cursed objects that are in that room. And over the course of the movie, you get to see uh, what a lot of them can do. The reason that they are in that room. Um, so, yeah, I think just, uh, just overall, this is a very atmospheric and creepy film. Um, it's got a great cast. Uh, it's not a very large cast. Uh, you've got Judy and her babysitter. I think her babysitter's name is Mary Ellen. Um, there's uh, the, the guy that lives across the street from Judy, Bob. Uh, yeah, um, Mary Ellen kind of likes him. He comes over uh, during the night. And then, of course, her best friend, um, which I can't remember her name. Is it Daniela? Something like that. Something very close to that anyway. Uh, but anyway, they're very likable kids. Um, you know, there's there's nothing bad about them. Um, it's just uh, it's just a, a kind of like a feel good kind of cast in inside this horror film. So uh, that's one of the things that I like about it. Um, and another thing that I like about it is that they're not all together at all times during this film. Uh, once it actually you know 
I would say, officially gets going once all the weird stuff starts happening in the house. They're all separated because uh, Judy has been put to bed. Um, Mary Ellen thinks that um, her best friend has left. Um, yeah, yeah, Bob's not there anymore. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, everybody is, is separated. And uh, this is when um, uh, the, the best friend, again, I think her name is Daniela or Danielle, uh, she comes back into the house um, because she forgot her keys or something like that. But she sneaks back in. Uh, so, she, you know, so nobody even knows that she's in the house. Um, but, you know, all the things start happening and you're switching back and forth between these characters, you know, what's going on with them. So it's not just, you know, all of them together, you know, dealing with some creepy shit that's going on. They're all dealing with it on their own. And then, you know, as the film gets closer to the end, it's only then that they start coming back together. So, um, you know, from a storytelling aspect, I thought, I thought it was handled very well. Um, you know, there's a lot going on in this film because, again, there's a lot of cursed objects in that room. Uh, and they, you know, not all of them, but, you know, a pretty good number of them come into play. Uh, and there's one in particular uh, that's kind of uh, one, of the, one of the main things going on besides Annabelle herself. Um, and uh, he's called the Ferryman, I believe. But anyway, he looks like a looks like a dead guy. He's got the coins on his eyes, like they used to bury people with. Uh, you know, the two coins to give to Karen when you crossed over the river Styx into Hades. That tradition that they used to have back then. So that's what he looks like, and he's creepy. Uh, there's you know several scenes that he's involved with, and there's some of the best scenes in the film, I think. Um, and I'm not sure, but I may have read somewhere that maybe a separate film um, with him as the, the main villain is in the works. Uh, so if it is, I'd be uh, very interested to see that film when it comes out. Hopefully it will uh, live up to expectations. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I mean, it's just a, a creepy film with a great cast. Um, you know, the storytelling, I thought, was very, very, you know, very well done. Um, there's a subplot. Don't want to get into, you know, spoilers or anything for people that haven't seen it. Um, but there's a reason that Daniela is, you know, trying to get into this room. Um, she's got, you know, some, some personal things going on uh, in her life uh, that she's dealing with. And, of course, we learn, you know, more and more about that uh, as the film goes on. So that was a nice added touch. You know, it gives a reason for everything that's going on in the film. Um, and then, of course, you know, there's Annabelle herself. Now, she doesn't play a major part. She's really just the conduit, because if you remember from the other films, other two films, um, that's really what the doll is. The doll itself is not actually possessed or anything like that. It's just a conduit through which, you know, a demonic force can act. Uh, and that's what, you know, when she's out of the case, that protection is not there. Um, so the, you know, the, the presence that is using her as a conduit is able to get out and, and do what it does. And, of course, uh, she's basically just an amplifier for all the shit that's in that room. So she's important to the film, but she's not really the main, you know, sole main focus of the film. So I thought that was interesting in that regard. You know, it wasn't just another Annabelle film. Uh, the other thing that I like about it is just the film is just very different um, from anything else that we've gotten uh, in the Conjuring Universe franchise so far. Um, because it doesn't have, you know, like, um, you know, like some big story to tell, really. It's more kind of like, it kind of reminded me of like a TV episode where, um, you know, it's like a regularly running show and they do like a, a special, um, you know, scary Halloween episode. Um, this kind of felt like that where, you know, this isn't, you know, a case from Ed and Lorraine Warren. Uh, this isn't the origin story for the nun or, you know, even something that's kind of loosely related like the curse of La Llorona. Um, you know, this, this just felt like a diversion. This is just a, you know, a little something, you know, that happened, you know, over the weekend in the home of Ed and Lorraine Warren. Uh, and they're not even in the film for very much. They're at the beginning and, you know, at the end when they come home. 
Um, so yeah, it really did just kind of feel like a you know a special Halloween edition of like a, a sitcom or something like that. Even though the film's not very funny, I mean, there's not a whole lot of comedic relief uh, in this film once it gets going. Um, but you know, it does have uh, you know <clears throat> a, a happy ending. I'm not going to you know give the ending away, but it ends up being you know basically a no harm no foul uh, type of ending. So. Um, it's just not as um, sinister, I guess, as all of the other films uh, in, the, in the Conjuring Universe franchise have been. Um, but it does have, you know, it's, it's creepy moments, it's scary moments, uh, it's got some genuine uh, traditional scares, it's got jump scares. Uh, everything's well-timed, I thought. The build-up, the setup uh, to all of the scares, I thought, was very well done. Um, just It's just a fun movie. And I think that's what this franchise really needed um, was just, uh, you know, something that you don't really have to, to pay a whole lot of attention to, to, you know, as to what is going on. Uh, you can just sit back, relax, have some snacks, maybe a beverage, and just enjoy the show. Uh, and that's what, uh, what I got out of it. Uh, so being able to, to revisit it a couple of nights ago, it was just, uh, again, just like it was the first two times I saw it in the theater. It was just a lot of fun. So as a, as a rating for this film, I'm going to give it an 8.0. I think it's very well done. Uh, it's just a great time. Um, you know, I've read the reviews of people saying, you know, oh, it's just another modern horror film with nothing but a bunch of jump scares in it. I don't see it that way. Um, you know, I, I really did have a good time with this film. Uh, so uh, if you've enjoyed, uh, you know, the other Annabelle films or you've enjoyed the Conjuring films uh, and you haven't seen this one, definitely check it out. Uh, 8.0 is, is my score for it. Uh, if you have seen it, let me know what you think down in the comments. As always, I love hearing what you guys have to say. And before you go, click that like and click that subscribe. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. And until next time, we'll see you.